Welcome to the conversation at airsafe.com. I'm your host, Dr. Todd Curtis. On April 1st, 2011, a Southwest Airlines 737 experienced a fuselage rupture roughly 18 minutes after takeoff from Phoenix, Arizona. This led to a rapid decompression of the aircraft, and the crew was forced to divert for an emergency landing at a nearby airport. None of the crew or passengers were seriously injured. Shortly after the incident, the NTSB launched a major investigation and found that there were a number of issues that might lead to serious problems with other 737 aircraft. First, the NTSB found evidence of extensive fatigue cracking in the area of the fuselage rupture. Second, the NTSB also determined that the kind of routine visual inspection that would have been done to this area probably wouldn't have found this problem. Third, Southwest Airlines grounded 79 of their aircraft that were prone to a similar problem and found that three of these aircraft were exhibiting signs of fatigue cracking. On April 3rd, 2011, I spoke with the BBC radio program The World Today about some of these issues. Federal investigators in the U.S. have found small subsurface cracks in three more Southwest Airlines planes, similar to those suspected of causing that rip. Uh, we should also say that the emergency landing did work out, uh, and the, plan was, uh, the plane was able to land with its rather terrified passengers. The top of the plane was ripped off, and all of a sudden the mass came down, and it was pretty, pretty frightening. Well, when we, when we could see daylight out of, out of the plane, I go, this is, you always think of people getting sucked out of the airplane when there was a hole in it, and uh, it was really scary. Hmm. You want to see daylight out of a window, but not a hole. Uh, Dr. Todd Curtis is a U.S. aviation expert. He's founder of Airsafe.com, former aviation analyst with Boeing, and has been following the story. Uh, first off, Dr. Curtis, welcome to the world today. Just give us an assessment. How serious is it? It sounds bad, but after all, we should say, you know, it was coped with, a landing was made. So what's your assessment of the incident? Well, the most serious aspect of this incident is the fact that this problem, which is still, it's evolving how they're understanding it. This is something that the NTSB has stated that during a routine inspection before this flight, it wouldn't have been spotted. These are cracks which are not obvious to the standard kind of visual inspections that they're done, and this will probably lead to some more extensive checks of these aircraft. All right, so what's being done? The aircraft are being grounded, they're being poured over with a, more than a magnifying glass? They, yes, they are. And in fact, while they're doing that, the FAA and the NTSB and Boeing, among others, are probably developing new procedures which will very soon be applied to all the 737-300s in the U.S. So they have to invent a new way to find this problem and stop it happening again? Precisely. So exactly. why, why hasn't it surfaced before then? That's intriguing. That's an interesting uh, question because this is something NTSB hasn't stated. They've stated this is a problem that hasn't really been seen before. And as a result, they haven't really had extensive checks for this particular kind of problem. And to make a long story short, airplanes are very complex. And even mm. though the 737 has literally been, literally been flying for over 40 years, there are still surprises that are being learned about how they operate. And uh, has the manufacturers, be, I mean, have they behaved um, sort of properly and been open about this as well? What's it going to mean for them, briefly? Uh, they've be behaved quite properly in that when the investigation started, it was very clear this was serious, and the NTSB got involved immediately, and they mm -hmm. got the manufacturer Boeing as well as the airline involved. And in the background, other 737 operators will probably be sending data to the NTSB of any similar event that could shed some light on this last incident. Okay. Many thanks indeed. Dr. Todd Curtis of airsafe.com. The investigation is still in its early stages, and it may be weeks or even months before the NTSB determines what happened to the Southwest aircraft. For further updates on this incident, please visit us at airsafe.com or airsafenews.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.